Hello friends, Books with Grandma here and today I have a book called Letters from Space written by Clayton Anderson and illustrated by Susan Vittori. So over here it says astronaut Clayton Anderson spent 152 days in space aboard the International Space Station and while he didn't mail dozens of letters back to Earth they would have burned up on re-entry. Imagine if he did. These letters were from space all full of weird science, wild facts, and outrageous true stories from life in space. Complete with hysterical illustrations from Susan Batori. A special author's note includes even more interesting information on space, astronauts, and living among the stars. Letters from Space Flight Day 3 Dear Mom, I did it. I made it into outer space. Launch was so cool. I can't even believe it happened. It was loud. It was scary. And the entire space shuttle shook like crazy. Once we started going really fast, I felt so heavy. It was like I weighed three times what I usually do. We went faster and faster and faster. And then everything went quiet. I started to rise out of my seat. I was weightless. There's so much more to come. I hope I receive lots of letters during my five months in space. I love you. Your son, Clayton. Flight day four. Hello, Sutton. Did you see us on TV yet? My head looks ginormous. All the fluids in my body have gone to my head. In weightlessness, that's very common in the first few days. Our hearts pump too much fluid into our heads because our brains think we're still on Earth. But with no gravity, it makes us look like we're a bunch of bobbleheads. It should go away soon. Our brain and blood flow systems will figure everything out fast. And I'm hoping I'll look more normal very soon. Keep watching, Clayton. Dear Mission Control, just wanted to let you know I'm on day three of my third pair of underwear. I know I'm supposed to wear them for four days before I throw them into the trash, but if they're still pretty clean, should I wear them for a few more days? I know we need to conserve our supplies up here. Thanks, Clayton. That was from flight day 11. Flight day 22. Hey, Cole. Thanks so much for writing to me. I'm so glad your teacher figured out my address up here. You have a new puppy? That is so cool. We can have pets in space. It would be neat to have a dog or cat, but what a mess with no gravity. Where would it go to the bathroom? Astronauts do bring animals to space. There have been mice and spiders and minnows and butterflies. The spider's webs look so strange at first, all crooked and messy. But they came around eventually. Astronauts have watched butterflies grow from caterpillars. It took them a while to realize they could still fly. Scientists want to see how animals and insects adapt to being weightless because they might help us figure out how ham humans can adapt to space. Man, human and animal brains are really cool. Woof, woof, Clayton. Cosmo, bring it. This says, hmm, yeah. Dottie's potty. Flight day 31. Sophia, thanks so much for the pictures from your vacation. The Rocky Mountains are beautiful, but you should see them from 250 miles up. They look so tiny from up here. We take pictures of Earth from space too. Scientists give us targets for something they'll call crew Earth observations. They compare our photographs over time, hoping to find clues about how things like ocean health, soil erosion, deforestation, and city growth. They like to use the word sprawl, are changing. It's really cool to take a picture and have a scientist tell you what you've helped solve. Let me do that one over. It's really cool to take a picture and have a scientist tell you that you've helped solve a real world problem. Keep sending those pictures, Clayton. Flight day 45. Hello, brother. I just did a spacewalk. It was incredible. I put on my space suit and went outside to work in space. When I exited through the hatch, it was totally black outside. The sun was behind the earth. I couldn't see anything, but I turned my helmet headlights on and went to work. We were out there for over seven hours and I rode on the robotic arm. I was like one of those guys who fix wires on utility poles, but in space. Man, did I have some great views of the Milky Way and the space station. 
Flight day 45 continued. Spacewalking can really tire you out. It was hard in a thinking kind of way. You must be careful and think about every single thing. Mistakes are bad and we don't get any do-overs. You'll be happy to know my spacesuit worked perfectly. It was like I was in my very own personal spaceship. It had everything I needed. Oxygen, drinking water, AC, and I could talk to mission control. With no gravity, I was flying inside my suit. It was amazing. See you soon, Clayton. Hey, mission control. Dang it, I lost my red marker again. I really want to find it because I love to label everything in red. Please let me know if you see it floating around the space station or on the live television feed. I'm hoping it got sucked in one of the in I'm hoping it got sucked into one of the air vents. That's what usually happens. Clayton. Flight day 92. Flight day 125. It's lunchtime in space, Anna. My favorite foods come from Russia. That's a good thing because my Russian crewmates all like the American food. No, that's a good thing because my Russian crewmates like all the American food. I love to start my meal with a can of stuff they call appetizing appetizer. It looks kind of like baby food. Yum. After that, I always love a nice can of lamb with vegetables or pork and potatoes. It looks a lot like cat food. Maybe it even smells like cat food, but I swear it doesn't taste like cat food. Scientists are watching everything I put in my mouth. I send, the, I send them notes every week and tell them all the food I ate. They want to know how much I eat, what I eat, and how often I eat. They are trying to figure out what diet will keep us healthy if we stay in space for a long, long time. Clayton. This says lamb with vegetables. This says yam. But when I first looked at this, it looked like it said lame. Lame with vegetables. It says pea soup and popcorn. Flight day 125. Dear Doc S, I think I made a huge mistake today. I was opening a bag of butterscotch pudding for lunch and I squeezed the end of the bag too hard. A big blob of pudding squirted out and flew across the module. It headed straight for my commander's face. But at the last second, he opened his mouth and ate it right out of the air. I was so embarrassed and praying he wouldn't get mad, but he just licked his lips and gave me a thumbs up. I thought of you because it was a great example of Newton's first law. An object either remains at rest or continues to move at a constant velocity, unless acted upon by a force. The pudding was at rest until I acted on the bag with a force. Phew! That was a close one, Clayton. Flight day 134. Hey, Tommy. I was thinking of you today and how we used to read comic books in Julie's apple tree back home. And then I realized that up here in space, I'm Superman. Every single day I fly to breakfast, then I fly to work. If I need a break, I fly to the bathroom. And I even fly while I'm going to the bathroom. Super cool. Stay super Clayton. Flight day 139. Dear Mrs. Rakes, I know you are nearly halfway through the school year, and I hope your science classes are having fun. I wanted to thank you for teaching me about the scientific method when I was in your class. It made me love science, and now I'm doing it in outer space. We have so many experiments to do while we're in weightlessness. One of my favorites is growing plants. Mission Control set up, sent up two plant growth chambers on a cargo rocket. One has basil seeds in it and the other has lettuce seeds. I water them every other day and then take photos of them on the days I don't give them water. Kids on Earth are following along to learn how things grow in space. Then they'll design a plant growth chamber of their own. How neat is that? I sure hope aliens like basil and lettuce. Thanks again, Clayton. Flight day 148. Dear Mom, I'm coming home soon. I can't wait to give you a huge hug. It has been almost half a year since I launched into space, and I'm looking forward to being home again. The time has flown by up here, haha, and life in weightlessness has been really fun. I can do so many flips. I could win an Olympic gold medal in gymnastics.
I'm ready to feel the sunlight and breeze on my face and smell freshly cut grass. I'm also ready for a nice big T-bone steak and a baked potato. I'm so proud of everything we've accomplished. I can't believe I did six spacewalks and flew the robotic arm. Who would have thought a small town kid would end up living in outer space? I love you so much. See you soon. Clayton. Flight day 152. Welcome home. Dear Mission Control, I'm home, safely back on Earth, and boy, am I glad about that. Maybe we should have a big party now that I'm back. We could invite family and friends and all the great folks who helped keep me safe up there. I know how hard they worked and that they had to spend time away from their families, too. It would be neat to say thank you to them for helping me live my dream. Respectfully, Clayton. Lots of stuff that I'm not going to read right now. Here's a picture of Clayton. And Susan. She's the one who made the amazing drawings. The end. Thank you so much for stopping by. And remember to always have fun.